You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it. You got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out. Basic to complex. This is Options Boot Camp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, your Options Boot Camp drill instructors, Mark Longo and Dan Passarelli, will break it all down for you. Options Bootcamp is brought to you by Tasty Trade. Ready to shred your paper trades? Then trade at Tasty Trade, the broker that gives you what you need to make your own way. Get smarter every day with options education and research tools. Analyze your risks clearly with a potential profit and loss graph. Chart your way with hundreds of indicators. Make the numbers make sense and find the opportunities only you can see. Trade it with fewer clicks on an easy-to-use platform. Mobile, desktop, web. Supported by a trade desk with decades of combined experience. Stocks, options, futures, and more. You choose, you trade. Get what you need to make smart moves. Go to tastytrade.com slash pod to see for yourself, genius. Tasty Trade Incorporated is a registered broker-dealer and member of FINRA, NFA, and SIPC. Fall in boot. It's time to get into peak options trading shape. It's time for Options Boot Camp. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. It is Education Wednesday, and you know what? Holiday week, shortened trading cycle, be damned. There's nothing that can come between you and your options boot camp. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E optionsinsider.com. Hope you're enjoying a good, if shortened, trading week this week. Hope you're maybe you're listening to this as you're racing through the airport. Who knows on your way to some destination here for all of our U.S. listeners. For all of our international listeners, you might be, what the heck's going on over there? Yeah, it's just a, just a short week for you folks out there, at least from a trading perspective. But an intriguing one. And again, hope you're doing well. Hope you're getting some time with friends and family. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. And of course, if you want a little help, perhaps <laughs> dealing with friends and family, we know there can be a lot this time of year. Maybe you want to take a break from the dining table, listen to some great content. Well, first off, wherever you're listening to Boot Camp, make sure you're subscribed to the full network. That could be on iTunes or Apple Podcasts now, of course. That could be on your Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get our content. Uh, make sure you're getting the full network. That's going to have a lot of great options content coming at you, including a revamped options playbook radio. That first episode right now is exclusively to the pro folks. We're hoping to get that out on the on-demand side a little bit later out there. Of course, speaking of pro, if you folks want more great options content in your lives, you want to go above and beyond the traditional network. You want to get access to great pro Q&A sessions. Heck, you want to participate in pro Q&A sessions. So you learn about these options things for the first time. You're saying, man, I have questions. First off, that's what this show is for. We tackle a lot of them here. But B, we go above and beyond with our great pro Q&A sessions where we welcome on some of the best minds in the world of options and derivatives, covering all topics, volatility, hedging, crypto options, you name it. Pro Q&A sessions, only place to get them, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Also, you get options oddities when you're there, a great show where we break down a whole bunch of unusual activity and talk ourselves into all sorts of fun trades. And a lot of our listeners get some fun ones going on as well. Fun time is had by all over there, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Also, live streams for this, everything else we do. 
uh, giveaways, all sorts of fun. You know where to go to get that goodness, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. And you also know who's joining me this week from the land of MTM, also doing double duty, holding down the old tasty trade hot seat. He's an ambidextrous guy like that. He is none other than the black hatted one himself, Mr. Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring. What the cool kids call mm to mm. Mr. P, welcome back to the show, sir. How goes your Thanksgiving Eve? Hey, Mark, it is wonderful to be back. And oh, man, I, I feel like I'm almost in holiday mode already. Holy cow. So are my dogs, apparently. Apparently. So are you saying you're already in a tryptophan coma? The, the holiday hasn't even happened yet? You're already in a stupor? Uh, well, not not more than usual, anyway. <laughs> are you wearing the stretchy pants already in anticipation <laughs> uh, of the big feast tomorrow, sir? Oh, I know. I've got them hanging in the closet just waiting. I know. Our inquiring minds, our listeners want to know, what is the black-hatted one Thanksgiving tradition? Are you going to gobble down some turkey, have a coma, and then maybe, you know, elbow a grandmother in the face for some Black Friday deals? What is the big Mr. P Thanksgiving holiday tradition? You know, we, uh, I, I am a very traditionalist. Um, I don't know if that's my Catholic upbringing or what, but, um, you know, we're just doing the straight oven roasted Turkey, very classic dressing, uh, as opposed to stuffing important difference, green bean casserole, uh, gravy, you know, just really straight American, uh, cooking, just having the family over and, um, you know, we'll probably get drunk and end up in a fight. Sounds like the time-honored American tradition to me as we keep on rolling. Speaking of time-honored American traditions and indeed Thanksgiving traditions, let's see if we can find some now as we head on into options drills. Holy moot! Time for our favorite pastime, option drills! We're going to take the strategies learned during the show and teach you how they can be employed to achieve a specific objective. Do you hear me? Yes, sir! All right, everybody. Welcome to the old options drills where we go a little bit above and beyond our usual basic training. Maybe explore some different techniques, different approaches, and maybe just some different ways to think about the options market. We did this recently. A lot of you folks had a good time when we did our our top five scariest, most frightening option strategies that resonated with a lot of you out there. So we thought, given this time of year, it's a time when everyone, at least here in the States, is supposed to be thankful for something. We thought we'd flip the script, get away from the strategies that terrify us that keep us away from options, and maybe gravitate towards the strategies that we all are very thankful for in our options trading. So that's what we're going to hit on today in our options drills. A little bit of our top five. I've got my own list. Dan's compiled his own list. We will get drunk and debate, just like it's a Passarelli Thanksgiving, and maybe fight virtually here over our own thoughts. So you guys get your own list together as well, of course. If you're listening live, send your name. Listen to it after the fact. Send them in as well. We can always debate them on a future show out there. But yes, top five option strategies that we are thankful for. You can view this a couple of ways. For me, how I take it is the strategies I'm thankful for are obviously the ones that I employ the most frequently and to the best effect, to the greatest utility for me and my account. So that's how I'm going to view. That's the lens I'm taking this from. Maybe Dan... Or maybe you taking a different approach out there. So I'll kick things off, Dan. I'll allow you to ruminate a little bit over there in your trip to fan stupor. Number five, this may come as a surprise to a lot of you people out there. And it kind of came as a surprise to me when I started putting it down. I said, wait a minute, am I actually going to add that to my list? But the more I thought about it, I thought, yes, the answer is yes. And it belongs here at number five. And Dan, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say the long put. Now, does that blow your mind, sir? Are you surprised by that? I'm super surprised by that. Uh, Holy cow, man. Uh, Where is this coming from? Exactly. Who is this person? Aren't you the same guy who just tells us all the time, don't waste your money buying and rolling out of the money puts and spy and things because it just ends up costing you a ton of money. And the answer to all of that is yes. So when I say long put here at number five, that is with a very large caveat that when I talk about using long puts, 
and I look back at some of my trading, I, I realize the only real use case I have for these these days is in a very specific product category. And in that category, I use them all the time. And that is the volatility complex. So we're talking about VIX puts. We're talking about UVIX puts, which have been very infamous of late. <laughs> or UVXY. I think we're going to get to some of those a little bit later in the mail call. VXX. All of these volatility products out there, including the universe of volatility ETPs, listeners, the exchange-traded products. And remember, we touched on these back in the summertime with our volatility themed episodes if you missed that go check that out but of course vix is the big mothership i just traded some vix puts last week on a flyer going into settlement worked out pretty well again i close them before settlement we always talk about that here i've traded a lot of downside in uvix recently to uh, interesting good and sometimes annoying effect you can hear all that saga on our volatility views program if you are so inclined and also on options oddities you do get into that on the pro side as well So, yeah, looking at a lot of my use case for the long put, it has been in this very specific context. I'm hard-pressed to go think of the last time, Dan, I went out and just straight bought a put on, let's say, a stock that I owned or on the S&P. I just don't really do that. If I'm going to do that, I'll leg into a put spread or I'll do something else against it, collar, something like that, something to mitigate the cost of that put. So I don't really go out and buy straight puts on equities very often or equity indices. But in the vol space, I would say... That, dare I say it, my primary strategy out there these days, except for maybe my number one, which I'll get to a little bit later, is probably this, the long put. So, Dan, what are your thoughts on that? A, have you recovered from your shock that I'm here extolling the virtues of a basic long put, not selling it? And then B, uh, what are your thoughts that I, I am limiting it to that context of the volatility space or trying to capture that roll yield? What are your thoughts? Okay, well, now it kind of makes a little sense. The world is right again. Um, I was I was thrown for a veritable loop there for a moment, but um, I get it now. I get it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I get it. All right, Dan, to keep the Thanksgiving metaphor going, the table is set. I now pass the turkey plate to you, sir. Which piece of the beast, which piece of the bird are you going to take first? What is your number five on your option strategies that you are thankful, sir? So I'm going to throw one out there that might be a little bit crazy. It's going to be the long call specifically for investing. <laughs> you know, you just said this on the show last week, too. Remember you said you, you wanted people to do long calls and we said immediately stop doing that. <laughs> do it yeah. once for your first trade and then never again. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you have this love hate affair with the long call, sir. By all means, regale us. Why is this your number five? Well, this is this is a very specific use case. And truth be told, I don't use it that often, but I am very thankful to have this in my back pocket, um, you know, when the burglar sneaks into my house. Oh, wait, I was thinking of something else. Um, no, uh, I'm glad to have this in my back pocket for when I need it. Um, I'll use it every once in a while when there is a stock or ETF or something that maybe it's kind of uh, made a pretty good run, but I think it can go further. And, and I want to buy it for my long-term investing holdings. Sometimes what I'll do, especially when the volatility is low is I'll buy a call like an at the money call, which, and you, some people might have to wrap their heads around this a little bit, what it does is it ensures me from being out of the market, from missing the upside move. If it continues higher, I will have wanted to buy it. Uh, but if it doesn't continue higher, then I'll just be able to buy the stock, you know, at a lower price. So it's um, it's something that I think a lot of people don't think about. A way to ensure missing a market move is is just simply the old fashioned long call. You know, I'm trying to think back to my use case for long calls, and it seems like most of mine comes in the context two flavors. I will sometimes put occasionally a long call on again, usually in the volatility space. If I think there's maybe some upside in the near term, a very near dated short term trade in a thing like a VIX or God forbid, a UVIX, something else where something's really going to explode, probably mostly in the VIX for the long call side. And then also if I'm going to buy a long call, Dan, it seems like a lot of times I will do it now 
as more of a stock substitution. So maybe something's had a good run. Maybe you want to take some underlying off the table, but you still want a little bit of skin in the game. So you dunk the stock. Maybe you buy an in the money, longer term call and you let that run for a little bit. That's kind of my use case for long calls these days. How does that float in the MTM pantheon of strategy, sir? Where does that fit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, these kind of things make sense. You know, I mean, just going out there, uh, like, you know, like we talked about last week, where novice traders will be like, oh, look, this stock's uh, in an uptrend, or it broke out to the upside, I'm going to buy a call. Um, You know, like that ends up not really working. But there are some specific, specific use cases, where it is by and large, absolutely the best strategy. Our pro chat, Mr. Dan, option God asking if the Jade Lizard made any of our lists. Of course, we oh, talked, yeah. talked about that on the show last week. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give a spoiler alert for mine. It is not there in my as much fun as we had with it last week. I have legged into those unwittingly, obviously, a number of times. It's not my go to by any means. So I'm going to say right now, Dan, a spoiler for my list. No Jade Lizard on mine. Did it make it on yours? Uh, it didn't. You know, that's uh, sort of. And I, yeah, I'm sure I've legged into some of those in the past myself. I, I know I have, uh, but to trade it really consciously as like a serial strategy, um, haven't quite explored it yet. Uh, it did sound interesting, um, but yeah, so therefore it did not make my list. I'm sure if we had a tasty person on with us this week, maybe if Jamal could get his phone worked out, <laughs> then he probably would put that eye on his list or certainly Liz recently. But uh, for Dan and I, at least... At the outset, putting those on all those legs together with the purpose of doing a quote unquote Jade Lizard, uh, not on my list, but an intriguing one, one to keep on the radar going for it. All right, Dan, number four. And I kind of struggle with this one, Dan. I actually just moved it around again as you were talking. So (laughs) it shows you my list constantly evolving because I had it higher than I realized. I don't do this more than the others. I wanted to, from a content perspective, I wanted to move this higher because it involves a couple of the things that I might want to talk about, but I, I couldn't lie to the folks. I couldn't say I do this more than some of the other parts of it. So I had to move this down a little bit. And this is the bullish risk reversal. We just talked about this with Brian on uh, the revamped OPR. He had a different thought process for what he wanted to call it. But when I was on the trading floor, this is what this was, a bullish risk reversal, selling all the money put, buy an all the money call. Obviously, there's many different flavors you could do with that. You could buy a call spread instead. So now, of course, uh, you have sold two things to finance that put. You can even, if you're worried about downside, buy a put against the short put. So now you've legged into a short put spread. A lot of different things you can do. You can do diagonals with it, all sorts of things. But the basic flavor, selling an out-of-the-money put uh, to establish, of course, that line in the sand where you are comfortable buying the underlying. And then if you think maybe this thing's going to run to the upside, and now I, I sometimes will put them on together. Sometimes I will go uh, the way the Rock Lobster likes to do it, which is I like to call maybe more the inertial bullish risk reversal. You sell the put first and you wait a little bit, see how things move. And if the stock starts to run against you, that's when maybe you leg into the long call leg. So maybe you don't do it at the outset, even though I have to say I tend to do it more at the outset. This is a strategy where really you're trying to get a, a low cost bite at the apple, listeners, a low cost swing to the upside fences where maybe you don't want to buy the stock. Maybe you don't want to buy a meteor at the money option, but you don't mind buying an out of the money call and financing it without the money put. And in the worst case scenario, the stock does drop. You don't mind picking it up at that level. So I I found a use case in my options toolbox, Mr. Dan, for a little bit of the old bullish risk reversal. Uh, What are your thoughts on that? And does that make your list at all, sir? Uh, it did not make my list. Uh, and you know, there's, there's kind of a theme shaping up here that we've talked about a lot. I I know I should talk about a lot as well, uh, that there is a use case for every type of strategy out there. I mean, the reason why there's like, you know, 30 different option strategies, you know, before you start, um, talking about different strikes and expirations and all that, is because there's a time and a place where each one is the best strategy to use. Um, and, you know, like just our, our own personal risk tolerances and, and how our brains work sort of maybe make them favorites or not favorites or something like that. But, you know, you, you can't really poo-poo any of them. Uh, you know, we've tried that in the past with long straddles and such, but then there's times when they make a lot of sense and I use them. So 
Speaking of things making sense to you, Dan, what makes sense to come in at the number four slot on your top five option strategies that the black hatted one is thankful for, sir? All right, I'm working backwards here, man. It is going to be the credit spread. Um, credit spreads are super versatile. They're fairly simple, uh, and I don't want to oversimplify because there is some nuance to them that is very important. But, you know, I mean, I can teach somebody how to trade a credit spread. I mean, you know, we've got a class on it. And it's a few short videos. I can teach somebody how to trade a credit spread in, I don't know, I mean, an hour with all the nuances and everything. But me, 30 years later of being in the options business, I still, I mean, I'm still trading them today because they are so useful and so practical. That they are indeed. So, all right, my list keeps evolving as we're talking. I'm changing mine again, Dan. So my list, very much a fluid beast. Come ask me after the show. Maybe it'll evolve again, Dan. But uh, I just moved mine around again because I was thinking to myself, you know, I want to be honest with the listeners, Dan. I don't want to lie to them. And I had to say to myself, is this really the number two for me or is it more of the number three? And I had to move it down to number three listeners when I was honest with myself. And this is the covered call. Uh, you love it. Maybe you hate it. Most of you love the covered call. It was my answer uh, recently on the show when uh, when our guest Liz asked, what is your preferred option starter strategy when you're talking to newcomers to the world of options? My go-to tends to be the covered call because so many people tend to have stock in their accounts already. So they understand stock, the nuances of stock. It goes up, it goes down. That's pretty straightforward to most people. Then you tell them, hey, if you sell this call, you're getting paid to get out of it at this level. It's like you're creating your own additional income and dividend stream on the stock. They tend to be able to wrap their heads around it. It's a more positive way to approach options for people who maybe are a little bit intimidated by them, understandably so. So for me, Dan, the reason why it just fell on my list again to number three, I had it at number two initially, is for kind of the opposite reason that I said it's my suggested strategy for people is that everybody out there has stock. For me, I don't, I don't carry a lot of underlying in a lot of my uh, trading accounts. So my utility for the covered call is a little bit limited. Uh, in fact, recently, I was just looking to see what my covered call use case. I was actually using them recently to try to harvest the dividend out in Bitto without having to carry the underlying for too long. <laughs> you know, So I was actually creating a little bit of an additional income stream on Bitto, trying to harvest that dividend that, as we all know, we've discussed on the show, is actually pretty sizable. Uh, so I was kind of experimenting with that. That's probably my most recent use case uh, for covered calls where I actually had some underlying. But outside of that, I don't have a ton of underlying, maybe some of the longer term accounts. Maybe I will put a covered call on here or there in some of these positions. Uh, that's why it limits it for me. I, I don't get a chance to do a ton of these just because I don't carry a lot of stock at the end of the day. But still an immensely useful position. If I am sitting on stock somewhere, chances are I'm going to try to write a call on it and, and get some additional income out of it. I love it. I just don't have occasion to use it as often as I would like. Hence its inclusion but at the number three spot, Dan, what are your thoughts on on everyone's favorite, the covered call? And does it appear on your list? sir? Um, well, um, I look at it as I'm, I'm doing two things with options. One is trading them and one is using them for my investment account. And so I love them. They do appear on my list, but... Not quite yet. I've got one before that one. Oh, so let's get there. What is number three on the Black Hatted One's Thanksgiving thankful list, sir? It is its close, close cousin, maybe sibling, younger brother, the cash secured put. What is this? I'm not familiar with this term, sir. Yes. And that is one specifically for investing purposes as well, and usually when I want to um, <clears throat> try and get assigned, uh, I tend not to trade them uh, to try and skate. I do every now and then, but more often than not, I'm putting them on and I'm sure hoping that I get assigned on them. Uh, that is kind of part of how I do our cycle recycle trade that I talked about. And that's a, a key component and sort of like, a, I don't know, I mean, I'll call it a pro tip, I guess, because I think a lot of people make the mistake of, of 
looking at them too simply uh, and and thinking, oh my goodness, if I get assigned, I'm in trouble. Uh, but no, no, that's that's that can be a key part of the plan. All right, since you're going on about short puts, I might as well slot them in at my number two overall as well. Listen, that's where it comes in for me. The short put, a great strategy. Dan just laid out some of the use cases for it. Uh, for me, it's it's very common. If I'm going to use any sort of entry point into an underlying position, it's going to start with uh, the short put. I may not be as bad as our guest from last week's episode, Liz uh, from Tasty Trade. She had to buy stock for a discount on a cruise, I think she was saying. And even then, she was still selling the puts. She wouldn't just buy the stock. <laughs> I don't think you can go up to the cruise company and say, look, I'm short all these puts. It's effectively to say that I don't think that, that works, Dan. I think you need to have the shares to get the deal. But mm. even in that scenario, she would not buy the stock. I'm not quite that bad. If I need a discount on something, if I want my AMC popcorn, maybe. Maybe I'll buy some stock. I'm just kidding. I don't, do not have AMC. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I will use the short put as my entry point into a lot of names and also a way to harvest a little bit of additional risk premium in certain names where I think maybe the put wing is a little bit overdone and it's a good chance to add a, maybe a little bit of additional income to the old portfolio. So Dan, for me, my overall number two option strategy that I am thankful for these days, it is your old friend, as you put it, the cash secured put. I know that's a bit of a loaded term. Some people get mad about that. It makes it sound safer than it is. So I'm just going to say uh, the straight up short put, Mr. <laughs> Dan is my number two. All right. That's my number two. What comes in? at the uh, Mr. P number two slot, sir. Well, like I was alluding to before, these things are very, very close relatives. And uh, looks like you're thinking that way too, because you've got them next to each other as well. But uh, I just flip-flopped them. I'm, I, I like the covered call just a little more than the short put because um, normally that's how I start my cycle recycle trade, which is, our more advanced version of the wheel. Um, I tend to start with stocks that I own. And in the event that they get called away, I end up selling the cash secured put more often than not. I'll roll the call to take in more premium to keep the stock, keep the profits on the stock and erase the losses on the call. But yeah, covered call coming in number two. I love it as an investing strategy, not a trading strategy, but as an investing strategy. I guess since both of us have covered call and short put back to back on our lists, does that mean we synthetically have the wheel on both of our lists, sir? Yeah, that, yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I, maybe we have a top six. We don't even know it. The wheel, it, it's infecting everything these days. The wheel is inescapable. Yeah. You can't get away from talking about the wheel on this show or any other show. These Everyone loves the wheel, listeners. So there you go. Your synthetic number six, listeners, is the wheel. All right, Dan, it is time for my number one. Are you, or maybe, you know what? I'll be charitable. I'll let you go first, unless you want me to go first. What is your number one option strategy that you are thankful for? Or you can tell me to kick bricks and I'll do mine first. Oh, you're such a saint, Mark. Uh, I guess I'll do mine. Um, it is a trading strategy, and it is the time spread. I would go as – well, first of all, I probably trade more time spreads than any other strategy – mainly because that's part of our total earnings domination system, one component of it. Uh, it has to meet very specific criteria in order to be able to use it for earnings. Otherwise, it can be a little hairy. But time spreads, man, they might be the most powerful trading strategy because of the edge that you can get trading them. You can put so much advantage into your favor that man, it's just, it's just a super, super powerful trade. There you go. The time spread, the trade that terrifies everyone in the world of options is Dan's number one option strategy that he is thankful. And I, as I looked over my uh, trade list and saw the strategy I'm utilizing the most these days, hence the strategy I am the most thankful for, it has worked out for me fairly well. It is the butterfly, but I probably want to amend that a little bit. Not the traditional symmetrical butterfly. I very rarely trade those. I don't like those uh, because for the obvious reason, unless your butterfly really settles out <laughs> at that exact moving target, uh, then it's hard to make those pay off uh, with uh, the broken wing. And I'm usually using these from the long perspective. I'm buying 
Uh, so the meteor option I'm buying, then I'm selling two, then I'm buying one farther out of the money. I will adjust those listeners. So in the broken wing, symmetrical, obviously, what you pay for that fly, it can obviously still all go away if you have an aggressive move against you. Uh, whereas the broken wing, there's always going to be some residual value in that, even if the underlying makes an aggressive move against you. So you're going to pay a little more for that in this scenario. But it's it, I found over time that can be worth it for you. And I'm going to utilize these in a lot of different ways. Sometimes I will let the short wing erode aggressively and then maybe take that off so I have a lower cost bite at the apple for the long legs that are left over. If I can get anything for the upper leg, maybe I'll try to sell it. Usually that's not the case. Sometimes you get a nice move early on, which is ironically sometimes one of the worst things you can have happen in a fly because you need time for that short leg to obviously decay a little bit. So you have to play with that a little bit. There are many different ways you could take off the butterfly. We've talked about that many times. Probably will again. Here you could take off one leg as a vertical, leave a short leg. A lot of things you could do, listeners out there. But for me, looking at all the different underlines, and I apply this across a variety of different products. I'll do flies. Sometimes I'll buy a put fly in a name I think, you know, maybe it's got a little bit of downside. Sometimes I'll do call flies. Usually it tends to be the call fly. That obviously is where you have usually the most uh, aggressive movement potential is to the upside. Unless you're talking about an Oatly, but I won't, I won't go down that rabbit hole right now. Uh, but uh, that, to me, looking at a lot of different things, I'll apply them on the vol space. I'll apply them in traditional equities. I'll apply them in indices. I tend to see the butterfly as kind of a universal entry point for a lot of different underlyings that I want to trade on. So for me, the butterfly has has proven to be a pretty i've used them out there in the crypto side on things like bitto uh so yeah it's a, it's an intriguing strategy that i found more and more utility for over time dan and more ways to play with it which i think to me makes it exciting and interesting and worthy of the number one spot on my list what do you think dan our old friend the fly or maybe in particular uh the broken wing fly what do you think about that as the number one slot on my list yeah, I like it. I mean, it makes sense. Um, I feel for me personally, I feel like the broken wing one is one of those where it's a, a bit more specific. Um, but I mean, just the butterfly family, uh, including and especially directional butterflies. So such great trades. I mean, yeah, yeah. And you tend to you view flies a, more from the dark side. You're more of a premium harvester on the on the fly side, correct? Uh, yes, yes, I, I typically am. Yeah. Um, or, or directional, um, you know, when I created the, uh, time spread genius scanner that we have, I would see some of these just like, they seem to be crazy time spreads, just like way far out of the money. And it was like, how does this trade make sense until I looked at it and I was like, Oh, if, if this thing, you know, if this stock heads up to that middle strike price, like this is absolutely the best way to trade this way better than buying a call or a debit spread or a credit spread or anything else. You can just risk practically nothing and just make a massively leveraged profit. So, I mean, I guess if I were to have a, uh, you know, a, a one plus um, spread, I, I guess I would take the specific directional uh, butterfly. I love those darn things. Dan turning his top five. You already said we have a synthetic six with the <laughs> wheel. Now Dan's turned it into a top seven with, mm -hmm. uh, with the directional butterfly. But there we go, listeners. Hard to contain all of our love for options. All the things we are thankful for in just the top five. What is your top five? Hit us up. Let us know. Speaking of you folks, it's time to get some of you on the show. A little bit of the old mail call. Mail call. Time to look at questions submitted by our listeners. All right, everybody, welcome to the mail call. A lot of folks uh, chatting about their favorite things in our pro chat, which, of course, you, you can go join over there. Listeners, the options insider dot com slash pro. Uh, a lot of people joking about the Jade Lizard not making on the list. <laughs> yeah, probably a little bit of a a little bit of a too recent discovery for Dan and I, even though we have, again, traded it unknowingly in the past, but uh, in not definitely not in my top five, at least for right now. 
Uh, we also have comments about uh, people loving cranberry sauce for Thanksgiving and bemoaning the fact that there are no cranberry futures. Okay, yeah, don't ask Uncle Mike about that. He says, at least oh, yeah, his joke is turkeys. Turkeys have no future uh, this time of year. We got age uh, saying here, he can't think of any reason for a retail trader to sell naked calls. Too much risk for too little reward. Yeah, I agree. Naked calls is definitely on top of my uh, strategies that are the most terrifying to me. So that was definitely why it topped out there. Nichols saying his number one on his, his list that he's thankful for is the old short put. I can see a lot of you, that is your go-to easy, easy use case for a lot of you. You want to get into a stock at a particular level, maybe just collect a little bit of the old risk premium. Bam, short put. I can see that for a lot of you, why that's your go-to. Uh, Frank chiming in saying he likes a covered call. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Two different sides of the same coin. A lot of, a lot of chime-ins for the covered call and the short put. Oh, options queen saying she likes to strangle. We sound like the rock lops. She's getting all into strangles these days as well. A lot of fun to be had out there, Dan. Speaking of fun, we always have fun with the market taker. Question of the week. What you got for us this week? All right. So I was asked this recently. Um, and the question is, is is there, you know, somebody said that they heard about this. Is there a way to repair a stock that has gone against you? And I might have had this as question of the week before. I get asked it, you know, a few times a year. And, and you say the, no, and then you kick them out of the live chat, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh the answer is there might be um, like with a lot of things, options related or just in the world in general, uh, the answer is pretty much almost never completely black and white. Um, there are a few different repair strategies. If it goes, if the stock goes against you a little bit, one of the things I love to do is just sell in, in the money covered call against it to make back what you lost on the stock if it's a very, very small move against you. If it's a bigger move, somewhere around like 30, 20 to 35%, we do what's called the stock repair strategy, which, man, it's been a minute since we talked about that one on the show, but it's a great one as well, where you trade basically, uh, you add a one by two vertical ratio spread buying an at the money call, selling to higher strike out of the money calls. Um, but then, you know, I was talking to some somebody different who was asking me about this a couple of months ago. And it's like, yeah, you know, I lost about 95% on my stock. Uh, you know, I bought it at 200. Now it's at 10 bucks. Um, is there like a stock repair strategy? Uh, that answer is no. Um, that answer is yes. It's called a uh, tax tax deduction for uh <laughs> for losing money on your trade um so you know you can options can do a lot but they can only do so much we got to be realistic about it uh, they are not magic tricks which is kind of how we describe sometimes that uh, that stock repair by the way dan the first time you and i talked about stock repair on the show was all the way back on episode 31 from october 3rd of 2013 so over 10 years ago sir it's oh. the first time we touched on that here on the show. We've hit on it a few times since. Most recently, it was a brief touching on it last year, October of last year. We had episode 209, Repair Trades and the Madness of Boxes. So listeners, check out those. Episode 31 and 209 if you want to know more about repair trades. Maybe, Dan, maybe it's time to revisit it in the modern era. So perhaps I'll, we'll pencil that in for a potential future episode as well. What do you think? Yeah, man, that sounds interesting. I like it already. All right, let's keep on rolling, listeners. Let's see how many of you we can get on here in the time we have remaining. Let's go out to Theta Noob. Dan, this name may sound familiar. He was the one uh, updating us on his long-term UVXY put spread trade. He was inspired by our episode we did exploring the universe of volatility trading products back in July, Dan. Uh, we inspired him. We lured him to the dark side of vol trading he discovered that world of volatility erosion and attempting to capture the roll yield or the negative roll yield in most of these products out there that occurs as they attempt to replicate vix futures positions with middling results and so he went out to uvxy which is a one and a half levered vix product we had a great debate about this in fact just on our last episode again it's been a raging topic we had a question of the week, or I think more of a flash poll recently as well. And again, listeners, 
as Theta Noob discovered, he's gone on to check on our Volatility Views show. If you're not listening to Volatility Views and this stuff even remotely intrigues you, you got to be checking out Volatility Views. It is kind of the only game in town in terms of shows that talks about this kind of stuff. Uh, we've been debating UVXY versus UVIX now for a while. If that means nothing to you, it's okay. But if that sounds like that's your jam, then Volatility Views may be for you. Uh, the now inclusion in in some of these products of VIX calls, SVIX in particular, that's very much a head-scratcher for a lot of people. People just tweeting at us right as the show is going right now about that. Some changes going on out there. So a lot going on in the vol space from an options perspective. Uh, you'll want to check it out on Volatility Views. But Theta Noob back, oh, months ago said there was an episode of Options Boot Camp back in July about uh, how a group of traders specifically trade VIX products. That prompted me to look into it, and I decided to test out a leap put on UVXY and manage it with a front expiration short put. So he legged into a longer term calendar, Dan. Looks like by, uh, he sent us a screen grab of it. Looks like he bought the June 2024 15 puts in UVXY back when UVXY, the, the underlying was at about 17 and three quarters. And then he financed it by selling a September 15 put against it looks like he paid a debit for that obviously you're going to do that listeners uh, the debit he paid was around 450 bucks looks like i think he just did one one lots here might have even just been a paper trade i don't know uh and then he gave us an update uh, we talked about on the show he gave us an update uh, a few weeks later saying uh, it was looking pretty good uh it was up about 18 percent he said he's also gonna start listening to volatility views so that's that's a good thing for your longer term vol trading there uh theta noob but also saying uh, he updated it back in September. He got rid of the short September put, and he moved it to a January 11 strike put. So now he has a long June 15 put in UVXY, a short Jan 11 put that he has legged into now. His plan was to close it when UVXY hit 11 because he saw no value in rolling. Uh, he says his initial cost was actually 550 so he was making around 65 bucks at that point on the one lot. Well, he gave us his final update a couple of days ago, Dan. And he wrote in to say, here's the closing trade on his UVXY put diagonal that he initiated with us back in July. Uh, his return, he ended up making 18% on this trade. UVXY was 17 and three quarters when he opened it. 1144 when he finally closed it. His return on capital, 18%. He net made about 100 bucks on this trade and he said his days in the trade was 125. So uh, of the initial days to expiration, 36%. I don't usually track my trades that way, but an intriguing way to do it. So Dan, he made about 100 bucks on his one lot, 18%. More importantly, I think uh, he learned a valuable lesson in how the negative roll yield impacts some of these products and impacts some of them more versus less. UVXY, one and a half levered. UVIX. An untamed beast, 2X levered, going to perform very differently. VXX, also a different beast in that scenario. So glad to hear it worked out for you, Theta Noob. Glad to hear you took a very judicious, cautious, one-lot approach to learning about this stuff. Glad to see you're taking the extra step of listening to Volatility Views if you want to go down that rabbit hole. And trust me, we do. Uh, so, Dan, what are your thoughts here on uh, Theta Noob making some money and also perhaps learning something, which is obviously much more valuable along the way? Uh, it's always valuable to learn something. Uh, always, man. As soon as you stop learning, you have lost. Um, I make it a point to continue trying to learn as much as I can about trading and lots of other stuff. Um, but yeah, man, uh, I like it. And I like that you're, well, you know, one of the things I like about it is that if you made a hundred bucks on this, I don't remember what Mark said the size was, but I, it sounds like the size was probably. It was a one lot. His net outlay was like 500 bucks. He made about 20% on a one lot and he he learned something. Not not terrible, not bad at the end of the day, sir. Yeah, that's not not bad at all at the end of the day. It's great. And um, you take the lessons of what you did right. And maybe there's some things you learned that you could do differently next time. And keep it up, man. Keep it up. You're, you're you know, listening to this show or, you know, whatever, wherever you get your knowledge from, keep, keep that thirst up and keep trying things and keep it small when you're learning. And man, I love it. I love it. We all love it here, listeners. And again, if all that is, is completely Greek to you, we get it. I will say for me, Dan, I have found myself, uh, part of it is volatility views, obviously. 
but I have found myself getting lured more and more into that trade for obvious reasons. Uh, Uvix of late has just been a beast to watch. It was trading sub two dollars, which so it was kind of useless. They reverse split it all the way up to around twenty five. Uh, the market giving some vol back and getting some vol back juiced it all the way up to about 45 and now it's back to about 19 all in the span of a few weeks we've seen all this unfold so that's been quite the wild roller coaster out there so i will say it does seem like a lot of my liquidity whether it's the long puts i mentioned whether it's the flies a lot of those are going up in the vol space these days dan that's that's just kind of where i see a lot of opportunities and also it's, it's nice to be able to try to capture this very replicable trade right this this roll yield Sometimes people can get overwhelmed by everything else, what's going on in the macro markets, what's going on in the Fed, what's going on with this name. Sometimes it's nice to just sink your teeth into one thing, which is, you know, hey, they're trying to replicate this front month VIX futures position. How well are they doing at that? And, and how, much, how much is that going to hurt the underlying over this period? And can I profit from that using options? It's a very, I won't say straightforward because it is still a little obtuse for people. But for me, it's a very much, much more of a straightforward a type strategy and i like it and I, I know there are people out there that's literally the only universe that they play in now which is just that it's a strategy you can do over and over again week in week out and have some reliable results you don't need to worry about the latest earnings from tesla or anything else <laughs> you just have to worry about this particular thing and it does make it i think a little bit more attractive i think data noob is discovering that so if that sounds appealing to you listeners, it may be worth uh, exploring some of our volatility views shows to see if that is truly for you. Now, if things like contango and backwardation and fixed futures, all these topics sound a little scary for you, then maybe those are waters you don't want to dive into. But it is intriguing nonetheless for people looking maybe for a little bit of an island of, dare I say it, sanity in a, an insane market out there. But Mr. Dan, if people are looking for a little bit of sanity in the world of options... Maybe they want to turn to MTM. If, if so, what can they look forward to there, A? And B, where should they go to learn more? Sure, yeah. Uh, you, you make your way on over to markettaker.com, two T's in a row. And uh, what you can look forward to is a really welcoming community of, of traders and, uh, and our support staff just to, to help you any way we can. So we'd love to hear from you and um, make your way on over. Make your way over to markettaker.com. Don't forget the second T for Theta. And, of course, while you're going places, make sure you head on over to tastytrade.com slash pod. That's where, of course, uh, they aggregate all of their uh, podcast promotions that they do these days. And tell them they, you heard about them from us. They will certainly like that out. They would like to see new people rotating in on the show and getting some different perspectives. Hey, Jade Lizard. We never would have talked about it if not for those folks. So uh, get on over there, tastytrade.com slash pod. Tell them you heard about them from us. It will please them immensely out there. And it goes a long way to helping to support the show at the end of the day. And that is going to do it for us, not just for Education Wednesday, but for this week. How often can I say that, listeners? But yes, it is, of course, a shortened holiday week. So uh, no shows tomorrow, luckily, and no shows Friday. We're not monsters. going to make people come in for a half session when they're out there battling the grandmothers for those Black Friday. People still do that, or is it all online now? I, know I still have the visions of uh, the grandmothers battling at the door of Best Buy. <laughs> Maybe that's a dated notion at this point. But nonetheless, I hope everyone out there has a great Thanksgiving holiday week. For all of you who are listening many months and years down the road, hope you're having a great day, whatever the heck you're doing. We'll see you back here Next week, next Education Wednesday, another episode of Options Bootcamp. Stay safe out there, everybody. Options Bootcamp is brought to you by Tasty Trade. Ready to shred your paper trades? Then trade at Tasty Trade, the broker that gives you what you need to make your own way. Get smarter every day with options education and research tools. Analyze your risks clearly with a potential profit and loss graph. Chart your way with hundreds of indicators. Make the numbers make sense and find the opportunities only you can see. Trade it with fewer clicks on an easy-to-use platform. Mobile, desktop, web. Supported by a trade desk with decades of combined experience. Stocks, options, futures, and more. You choose, you trade. Get what you need to make smart moves. Go to tastytrade.com slash pod to see for yourself, genius.
Tasty Trade Incorporated is a registered broker dealer and member of FINRA, NFA, and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.